So for the re that's what we have in store for us for open uh, session. But first, my director's report. And um, for the rest of my director's report, I'm going to cover these seven areas because I have found these to provide a very nice framework for reviewing the topics uh, that are important to go through. And I'll start off with the general NHGRI updates. But in doing so, I want to tell you that the most important update about NHGRI that I have to tell you today comes in the form of an official announcement. And while the process that got us to that announcement from concept to final approval has taken well over a year, I'm pleased to announce today that my proposed reorganization of NHGRI has been approved and will be implemented on October 1 of this year, in fact, in precisely three weeks. Earlier this morning, NHGRI issued a press release about this announcement. That press release and various other information about the reorganization is available at this URL, genome.gov backslash reorg. Because of its importance to NHGRI, I thought I would spend the first part of my director's report reviewing the key details about the NHGRI reorganization. At the present time, and really for the past roughly 19 years, NHGRI has had a relatively simple structure consisting of an office of the director, a division of extramural research, and a division of intramural research. Within the current office of the director uh, were three smaller offices, the Office of Administrative Management, the Office of Policy Communications and Education, and the Office of Population Genomics. Now keep in mind that in the case of the Division of Extramural Research, this structure was put into place entirely to support the Human Genome Project. But over the past nine years in particular, NHGRI's extramural research program has grown substantially both in overall size and in the diversity of its scope. So based on knowledge from being the NHGRI director for nearly three years, I will soon implement a new structure for our extramural research program, one properly aligned with the strategic vision for genomics research that we published in Nature in February 2011, and one that I think better configures us for our ongoing and our future research agenda. So my plans for reorganizing NHGRI aimed at making major changes to our extramural research program, some minor changes to the components of the Office of the Director and essentially no changes to our intramural research program. Now, the new organizational structure for NHGRI, which takes effect on October 1, will grow the number of divisions within the institute from the current two to a set of seven. Specifically, the Office of Administrative Management will be elevated to division status and be called the Division of Management. Similarly, the Office of Policy, Communications, and Education will be elevated to become the Division of Policy, Communications, and Education. Those two new divisions will thus form from elements previously in the Office of the Director. Meanwhile, the Office of Population Genomics will dissolve in name, but the elements of which will be incorporated into the extramural research program, as you will see shortly. The Division of Intramural Research will not change as part of this reorganization. The most substantial aspect of the reorganization will be the creation of four new divisions that together will constitute NHGRI's extramural research program. The Division of Genome Sciences will oversee basic genomics research and technology development. The Division of Genomic Medicine will promote the Institute's effort to advance the application of genomics to medical science and clinical care. The current Office of Population Genomics will be subsumed into this new division. The Division of Genomics and Society will be responsible for an expanded program related to the many societal issues relevant to genomics research incorporating and extending the activities of this institute's ethical, legal, and social implications, our ELSI research program, and working to integrate the many NHGRI-wide activities in these areas. Finally, the Division of Extramural Operations will manage the myriad operational aspects of the institute's extramural research program, including scientific reviews and grants management. So in the end, NHGRI will consist of seven divisions, each with a division director that will report to me as NHGRI director. In this way, the extramural research program will no longer have a single director as it has since its inception. Rather, the four division directors of the extramural divisions will serve as a collective leadership team working closely with me and the NHGRI deputy director, Dr. Mark Geyer, in leading the extramural research program. Now, getting to this announcement today has not been particularly fast uh, because there were a number of specific steps that had to be followed to reorganize the institute as proposed. Specifically, we followed the guidance given in the NIH Reform Act of 2006 in terms of the process for carrying out such a reorganization. As some of you may recall, this involved holding two public meetings during which we detailed our proposed reorganization, answered questions, and took feedback from participants. The first of these was held as a webinar on January 18th, the second as part of this, the meeting of this council on February 13th. 
Following those public meetings, we put together a final reorganization package and submitted it to NIH leadership in late February. Upon receiving NIH approval, the NIH leadership in turn sought the approval of the Department of Health and Human Services. In fact, Secretary Kathleen Sebelius herself signed off on our reorganization in late June, after which the Office of Management and Budget, as well as the U.S. Congress, were notified. Having received no objections from those latter two groups, we then actually crossed the approval finish line, and this allowed us then to announce the reorganization today and then to implement the reorganization on October 1st. Now, key to the success of this reorganization and indeed the future pursuits of NHGRI will be the leaders within the new structure. And so today, I'm also pleased to announce my outstanding new leadership team. Now, for three of the divisions, there will be essentially no change. Janice Mullaney will be the director of the Division of Management, just as she is now the director of the Office of Administrative Management. Dr. Laura Lyman Rodriguez will be the director of the Division of Policy Communications and Education, just as she is now the director of the Office of Policy Communications and Education. And Dr. Dan Castor, who you'll be meeting later today, will continue to be the director of the Division of Intramural Research, as he is now. The real changes occur with the four new extramural divisions. Now, for three of these four divisions, I have selected the directors and deputy directors, all longstanding members of the NHGRI extramural staff. Their actual appointments should take effect once we get final approvals, which are expected shortly. Leading the Division of Genome Sciences will be Dr. Jeff Schloss as director and Dr. Peter Good as deputy director. Leading the Division of Genomic Medicine will be Dr. Terry Manolio as director and Dr. Brad Osenberger as deputy director. Leading the Division of Extramural Operations will be Dr. Betty Graham as director and Dr. Rudy Pizzotti as deputy director. In the case of the Division of Genomics and Society, I am formulating a plan to search for its director. Until that search is completed, this division will be led on an acting basis by Dr. Mark Geyer, who all of you now know, of course, as the Institute's deputy director. Now, finally, to round out this reorganization, I will also be making some changes in terms of senior advisors. Effective October 1, there will be three senior advisors at the Institute. Dr. Jane Peterson, who has long been the associate director of the Division of Extramural Research, will become a senior advisor to the NHGRI Office of the Director, while she will work closely with me and Dr. Geyer. Vince Bonham will be my senior advisor on genomics and health disparities. And Karen Rothenberg will be my senior advisor on genomics and society. Now, an issue that has frequently been discussed internally and that was raised during the public meetings uh, related to the oversight and execution of individual extramural programs and projects in light of the new multidivisional organization of the extramural research program. So I thought I would say a few words about our plans for this. While the three programmatic divisions, in genome sciences, genomic medicine, and genomics and society, will be organizationally separate, we plan to continue having programs and projects overseen in a highly collaborative fashion, in most cases involving staff from more than one division. For example, our flagship genome sequencing pro program will draw on expertise and personnel from all three divisions. Similarly, an area like computational and biology and bioinformatics will be highly relevant to all three divisions involving personnel from each of those divisions. There will be programmatic areas such as the biology of disease, one of the major domains of genomics research in the coming decade. And again, this will require the involvement of staff from all three divisions. And one can imagine the same to be true for the other, uh, both current and future programs and projects. Now, while the details about this intersection between programs and divisions uh, need to be worked out in the coming months, we are all fully committed to maintaining the highly collaborative and cross-disciplinary nature of the NHGRI extramural program something that has set us apart for many years and that must be preserved. So in summary, this is an incredibly exciting time for genomics research, and I believe that NHGRI has the right strategic vision to continue leading the field as it has done for the better part of two decades. Implementing this new organizational structure is an important step in NHGRI's growth and evolution and one that will better position the Institute to pursue our expanded mission and also to deliver on our, on our exciting strategic vision for genomics. So that's the official announcement I wanted to make, and now I will return to the remaining portions of my director's report. 